at dusk. From a bench tucked shyly into the shade, I watch the wind seduce warm colored foliage through binoculars up on the seat, taken by how the petals dance like flames, thankful for the brief gift of life. They're flickering, hints of the day shortening like a lit fuse, warns that there will be an explosion of silence named winter arriving soon, that the temperature will descend into indifference. In the way, tree limbs will resemble my own fingers, slender and anxious to dress themselves in anything willing to hold them. I then turn myself toward the right, my better side, where I always seem to find you and translate the image into imagery. There is a laugh returned to me as commission, a playful remark regarding my charm, and a hand curled around my index finger like the foot of a bird around a branch. The entirety of this exchange imagined because you have made flight for the weekend or a season in search of a warmer place to nest in the space between my neck and shoulder, mm. at least. This is what I tell myself covertly between my ears when I feel colder in your absence than is justified by the reading of my thermostat. I presume you would call me silly for this thought, a sapling, like a tree that claims it still feels the beak of a woodpecker drilling its heart open for sweetness. It's, it's just that I've come to see pangs of loneliness as breezes pour too suddenly into emptiness not primed to receive them, such as my ears at mention of your name inside a larger question of whereabouts. But fortunately for the flight, roots like me profess difficulty in moving and so grow to be dependent on as they grow. Their anatomy stretched for reaching for things that are not there, things that lie over the horizon like you or a weekend or a season. Perhaps you consider this all unnecessary hyperbole, but romance is already an exaggeration of friendship, and so this use of metaphor came to be a metaphor. And in accordance with the symbolism of this season, I will fall for you near September's end. You will soar over the horizon until a revolution of instinct completes itself within and lands you in my arms. You will perch there and rest. I will support the weight without snapping. We will pinch the wings of time together with our lips so it, a hummingbird with precious nectar, does not fly off without our consent because all we are trying to do is make this last. Mm. Make this the last time this willow leaps a fire. Make this the last time my calling of your name brings a pigeon instead of a dove. Make this the last time mm. that your feathers have an itch for movement because lovebirds were not meant to be migratory. They were meant to couple like lines of poetry according to the meter of their drumming hearts. And for some time, your heart worked without making sound, gave you life, but no music, making you question if you were the genius of adoration you thought you were. But understand you are what you believe yourself to be, a marvelous creature blessed with the gift of flight and the luxury of not needing to use it. You, who has taught me that if gravity pulls it both with even temper, then the only difference between the leaves on my limbs and feathers lies purely in my self-perception. And if my thinking leaves as feathers makes them so, then that is what I will do, as if implying <coughs> that at the same time, two flying ink blots and the binoculars of the steed of the changing of seasons cannot erase from the sky. Mm.